Alright, I got this Honda here with a misfire. The number two cylinder here is missing. Um, I already checked for spark, so we got spark here. Now I need to check and make sure we got uh, control from the computer on that uh, fuel injector. And I figured I'd bring you along, show a couple different ways you can test them, talk about it. Alright, before we get started, it helps to know a little bit of background on the system you're testing. In this case, fuel injector represented by the blue there. Every fuel injector needs a um, power and a ground. So needs battery voltage, needs a ground. Most systems get their uh, battery voltage right from the battery itself. It can run through a fuse, it can run through a relay. Sometimes they do run through the engine computer, but the bottom line is they need a power and then they need a ground. And most systems ground it through the engine computer. That's how it has control of the fuel injector. So when it receives all the proper inputs, the computer grounds it at the correct timing and then that sprays fuel out through the pencil there. So when we go and do our checks we want to see battery voltage and we want to see a ground and in this case it'll be a pulsed ground because uh, the engine computer is not going to be grounding it all the time. It's only going to do it when it wants the fuel injector to turn on. And so it's represented by this little graph here. This is what it looks like if you're looking at it on a scope you see the battery voltage this is represented by battery um, positive usually you know 12 to 14 volts wherever your system is and then as soon as the engine computer wants it to turn on it grounds it and so you'll see that signal go to ground and then it grounds it for a certain length of time and then it turns it off and that's how long your fuel injector fires right there and then once it's done it takes the ground off it removes it and then you'll have a voltage spike and that's because the internals in there once you run power through something it develops a magnetic field and so this is the collapse of the magnetic field inducing a voltage spike and so that spike will spike way up and it'll come back down and usually when you look on a scope if you look close you can see a little hump right there and that's the pintle movement right there of the fuel injector and then it goes right back to battery voltage and then it repeats the process the next time the computer wants to fire it so there you go just a little background now let's get started testing the first test I'm gonna do is with the Noid light I'm gonna use this uh, Noid light set from OTC model number 3054E and you can see that's that's how it comes uh, I'm gonna use this uh, GM Multitech 2. It's got really thin, uh, really thin connectors. Should be able to get in there without doing any damage to the uh, connection. Usually in this set, you can find something that'll match uh, the fuel injector on your vehicle. This set, the E on the end of the model number, means it comes with this extension, which is kind of nice. You can put the Noid light inside there, and it carries it along so that you can uh, like put it on the windshield in case you have a no start. Uh, that's kind of nice, kind of handy. But anyway, let's get started. As you can see, I have the number two injector disconnected. If I plug it in, there's no difference. And the engine is, check engine light is flashing in there right now. You see absolutely no difference. hook it up you can see it's flashing so we got computer control on there but we don't know if the uh, injector if the windings and everything in there are good um, because obviously we have it disconnected so this way is easy but we can't tell if the uh, current is flowing through that uh, fuel injector so let's try something else all right on these Honda systems we don't even need a wiring diagram we can just simply see um, each one of these fuel injectors has a yellow with a black stripe wire on it right here yellow and black yellow and black yellow and black and yellow and black right there every single wire and then on the other side we have a color 
So brown, what is that one? Red, red, blue, and then a solid yellow. And so we know that the wire that's the same on every one of them is going to be the power. And then the other side is going to be the ground which the computer is controlling. So now we'll just grab our test light, look for uh, battery voltage, look for ground and control. All right, now we'll use a test light to check. And it's very similar to the Noid light. The difference is we need to connect it up to the battery. So first we'll go battery negative, make sure our test light works and it does. Now with the key in the on position, we just take our test light and uh, we just need to see if we got power on here. So if you can see it, I'm just going to touch inside there. I'm not going to jam it in there. Just touch and you can see we got power. So we know we got power coming in here. Now we got to check for ground, but we need the vehicle running for that because the ground is controlled by the computer. So. We'll put the test light over to positive. We'll turn the vehicle on. We'll check for ground. Now we'll just do the same thing on the other wire. We'll look for a pulse signal. Just touching it in there, you see we have control. And that's how you check it with a test light. Slightly more work than a Noid light set, but not uh, not too difficult. Um, the only thing that makes it a little more difficult is if you had a no start, it would be hard to uh, be cranking it and see your light. You'd probably need an assistant. So, but pretty easy. All right, next I'm going to use a power probe 4 to check the fuel injector. Um, this power probe, the power probe 4s have a um, fuel injector mode on it, which is kind of nice. And when you look at it, you know, the red and green lights will flash, meaning you have power and ground. And it'll show the battery voltage, it'll show the ground, and it'll show the inductive uh, kick there, and it'll also show the injector on time. So pretty neat little tool you get a lot of info from it and I'll just use a back probe similar to this we'll back probe the connector to get our connections on there and with the power probe you hook it up battery positive and battery negative and then we hook the end up to it and you should hear it power up. All right, and there you can see what the power probe looks like powered up. It defaults to voltage. Um, I have this wire with a connection on the end there so I can just plug right into my back probe. So I'll just plug that in, be able to use it. They also make just a little tip that you can cinch, sense voltage and, and ground. That's what's nice about these. Because you're connected to battery power and battery ground, this will sense this will sense uh, battery voltage and it'll sense uh, ground also, whether you got a good ground or not. Makes it real easy. Just one touch and it'll tell you ground or voltage. Definitely makes uh, checking for power pretty easy. Um, so we will go just click mode. We'll use the down arrow. We'll go down to fuel injector. Fuel injector right there. And then now we're ready to go. Turn that sound off. There you go, we got good power and ground, which we already knew. Injector pulse is at about 4.19 milliseconds. We got a good voltage spike of 66, and uh, we got good ground, 0.24, and our battery voltage 14.3. So, with one simple test, you can see this really did give us a lot. Um, I can physically see in my mind, you know. 
the computer's giving it ground and then uh, letting off, and then we get the spike. The only thing we can't see is the pencil hump movement of the fuel injector. So uh, this tool is really handy to have uh, for doing stuff like this. Uh, I tend to forget about it and just use a Noid light or test light. Uh, but this thing, this thing's pretty cool. Um, I mainly use this to do uh, power windows. It works great for that. Uh, but obviously you can see it works great for this too. Let's uh, back probe us another known good uh, fuel injector and see if we got the same about the same on time and voltage kick. I'm going to unplug that injector so that we don't have uh, fuel dumping in that cylinder. Very close to the same, just under 4, 66. Battery and ground. Actually, just over four. So yeah, it, it looks the same. So we know everything going into this fuel injector is good. Now, the actual pencil movement might be bad, but at least everything in the circuit is good. Well, there you go. That's three different ways you can check the uh, fuel injection circuitry on these Hondas. Um, test light, Noid light, or power probe. Um, while I'm thinking of it, this, I know it's a fancy red bulb in there, but this is a standard test light. It is, uh, it's not an LED test light like this one. I was just using a standard test light. Um, and that's going to be your cheapest route. These run, I don't know, five bucks to 30 bucks, depending. You can go to Harbor Freight and get one for four or five bucks. Um, the Noid said light is around 20 to 25 and the power probe is the most expensive at about 150. But you see, they all work, but they all uh, they all have their pros and cons on on uh, how they work. And just as a bonus, there's a there's a shot of a fuel injector on the scope, just so you can see. Now, if you can tell, this is a good one. There's your pencil movement right there. You can just barely see it. In fact, if we uh, close our scales down. I can't see it at 10, maybe, uh, maybe 20. You can see the pencil movement right there. Just a little bit, but that's it right there. Let's see what we got on the bad one. All right, this is our suspect. You can see we got pencil movement right there too. So I don't believe there's anything wrong with this fuel injector. Our issue is somewhere else. There you go, that's just a little bonus. Obviously, if you use a scope, you can get all the info, but this is definitely the most expensive way to do it. Now, off-camera, what I did is I plugged the fuel injector in, and I ran the vehicle for a while, and I looked at the fuel trims, and I saw that uh, the computer was taking fuel away, which means that that thing was dumping fuel in there, and it wasn't getting burned. It was, it was running rich. And so I unplugged it, let it run for a while longer, and then I saw the fuel trims adjust and adjusted to a lean condition and then the computer had to start adding fuel so that tells me this fuel injector is working no issue there I hope you enjoyed seeing how I troubleshoot the circuitry on these fuel injection systems on these Hondas and as always if this video helped you out make sure to give it a thumbs up thanks for watching okay little bonus footage here alright we got fuel and we got spark. Now where do you go next? If you're looking at this vehicle, where do you go next? What do we need for that cylinder run? Fuel, spark, timing, and compression. And pretty sure the timing is on because uh, the other three cylinders are working. So I'm not, I'm not looking at the timing right now. But I am going to look at the uh, compression. Well, I confess I already did look at it. Uh, and you can see right there. 160 and number one number two which is our bad one is only at 70 and then three and four are both at 140 so as you can see there's our problem we don't have compression on the number two cylinder so up next leak test leak down test see where it's leaking out of
Uh oh. Well, there you go. As you saw from the leak down test, we got air coming out of the intake. Uh, I did check the exhaust. I didn't show it on camera. There's nothing coming out there. So, intake valves are bad on this uh, number two cylinder. Um, judging by the condition of this engine, I would suspect that uh, the valves were never adjusted and that's why they uh, burned them up. Well, at least that's my suspicion. Won't know until I pull the head off and check them out. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the, uh, this little bit of bonus footage. Have a great one.